Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and in this video I'm going to show you how to do the avionics setup in the Antonov 225 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. For our tutorial flight, today we are taking it from Cologne Bonn Airport to Leipzig Airport, which is a classical cargo route in Germany. So, this is the route of flight that we are going to fly and this is going to be our standard instrument departure, the PODIP 8 Bravo departure. So, first of all, let's start with the setup of the GPS. Now, this can take quite a bit of time in the Antonov because we have to do it while programming every single waypoint manually, unless we want to load up a route of flight using the flight simulator's default map. Personally, I'm not a big fan of cheating that way and using the default map. So in this video, I'm going to show you the entire process of setting it up in the GPS and to do the remainder of the avionics setup necessary for our flight. Okay, let's start with the basic GPS programming before we go ahead and do the programming of the um, avionics. Now, the navigation unit fitted in this plane is the standard Microsoft Flight Simulator GNS 530 and as a couple of you have correctly pointed out under my last videos this is not exactly the unit that is installed in the real plane but comparing what there is in the real plane to what we have in flight simulator the gns 530 is actually the more powerful tool for navigation so We'll quickly let it acquire its GPS satellites, which is completed now, and then we can go into the flight plans. We press the push cursor button, which marks the first waypoint, and then we rotate this to the side, which opens the waypoint entry menu. Now, if you want to cheat a little bit and not have to scroll all the letters manually, just, you are just going to click this little keyboard icon up here, and now you can basically type your waypoints yourself. So now I'm using my keyboard in order to type in the waypoints. We're going to depart Cologne and our destination. Sometimes it doesn't really work, so be careful that you actually enter everything you want. Our destination is going to be Leipzig. Now we go onto procedures, select departure, and we're going to select our departure, which is going to be the PODIP 8 Bravo. And here it is. Hit enter, runway 3 to right, load. Now we push the cursor and in order to insert waypoints we're going to set the marker to the field where we want to enter the waypoint. So in this case this is just above the destination airport. We rotate the small button which brings us to the waypoint entry menu. So we're already at Podip, so let's go ahead and fly towards Batgo. Basically I'm just typing all the waypoints from the um, map that we see up here. A little cheat there, you don't need to view the cursor every time, but once you've entered a waypoint just scroll with the tiny wheel again and it will bring you forward to the next menu. So, now we're gonna enter Paloon, scroll on here again, up Zool, and as said, I'm typing all of this with my uh, keyboard which makes life quite a bit easier. A good point in time to actually do this programming of the route is while you are starting the engines. The engine start in the Antonov takes several minutes, so you might as well use those to program your GPS if you want to save a little bit of time. Now with the entire route entered, let's push that cursor button once again and just scroll through everything that we have inserted, making sure that we see a reasonable amount of track miles on the right hand side over here. With the last waypoint in, let's go ahead and select the approach that we want to fly, and looking at the chart and the uh, information for Leipzig, we have a wind of 0408, so we're going to fly an approach for runway 08. Looking at the airport chart, it is going to be runway 08 right today. So, now that we know which runway we are going to use, we can insert the approach and the star. But we are going to start with the approach. So we go in Procedure, select Approach, ILS 08 right, Enter, and we're going to take the Sanu transition. Load, 
Yes, here we go. And finally, we can go ahead and enter the star as well. And in this case, we are planned to fly the Kojak 1 Romeo arrival. Or runway 08 right, load that in, and that is basically our entire route programmed. If we scroll through this once more, we can now see that we've got the entire route of flight programmed into our GPS. Finally, exit the flight plan menu, and personally I would recommend to use the little navigation map screen over here, since it is the only map we have available in the Anton 5. You can change between the different types of displays by either scrolling the small cursor, which changes you through the different nav menus, or by using the large cursor, which changes you through the different pages that we have available. For our purpose today, as said, I recommend this type of map, as it makes our flight easiest. Finally, we can press the CDI button to change the GPS into GPS mode. However, be aware that we are going to uh, still have to select the navigation mode manually later on. So this is the setup of the GPS. Now let's go ahead and do the conventional navigation setup. If we have a look at our departure chart for the PODIP 8 Bravo departure, we can see that this is a fully conventional departure. There are charts available for both the conventional navigation version as well as the ARNAV version. We can use the ARNAV chart to cross-check every single waypoint with the GPS, which you should do as in any airliner, but for now let's use the conventional departure chart in order to determine our radio navigation setup. So, speed limit maximum 250 knots below level 100, and this equates approximately 460 kilometers per hour, but before we set those up, let's quickly go ahead and check our other restrictions, if there is any more limiting value. Initial climb clearance 5,000 feet, and since the autopilot in the Antonov is only in meters, let's go ahead and go to the unit converter tab and convert a distance of 5,000 feet into meters, which gives us 1,524. So, knowing that, let's set the autopilot up for 1,500 meters. Going on from here, let's have a look at the route of flight that we are going to fly. The SID takes us initially straight ahead to a certain distance up here. We can also view this in the textual description. So climb towards Lima Juliet at 1.6 KBO or 2.2 DME Icon or 700, whichever is later, turn right intercept radial 242 Golf Mac Hotel in mount to 21.1 miles and then turn right to intercept Vipa radial 106 towards Podip. So, that means we need KBO VOR and then we need Gold Mike Hotel VOR. Now, what would be a good way to set this up for conventional navigation? Well, KBO VOR is basically not located on the runway or not located on the extended center line of the runway. So we cannot use that for lateral navigation. We only use it for, D for the DME. The first VOR that we'll use for lateral navigation is Gammenhausen up here. So, a good idea to set this conventional navigation up would be to put KBO in radio number 2 so that we can use the DME and then Gammenhausen into number 1 so that we can use it for navigation. The other way around, of course, works as well. We can use KBO in number 1 so that we actually see it on our DME in the cockpit down here and then we can uh, switch it over to Golf Mike Hotel when we need to. So, let's go ahead and actually do that. This brings us over to the navigator station, and we have our two VOR displays over here. Now, let's go ahead and do what we have just discussed, and we are going to enter 112.15 into the radio number 1, and we can see that this automatically identifies as Kilo Bravo Oscar Cologne Bonn. Then we are going to enter 115.4 into our radio number 2, for the Golf Mike Hotel. We can see that we need a course of 062 into there, so let's select the course number 2 to course of 062. Note that you can only change the courses on the navigator station, you cannot do it from the uh, captain's seat. 
The other one we need is going to be 106 later on outbound from Vipper VOR for the radial towards Podip. So let us pre select course number 1 onto 106. The final setup we can do is to set up our Lima Juliet NDB, which we are going to track towards initially, which is on a frequency of 365, and that means we can tune 365 on both of our ADFs. So, 3, 6, 5, and 3, 6, 5. The last thing we need to do now is to configure our HSI, or use with our navigational setup. We said that initially we are going to use KBO to track outbound, so I've selected that one on the VOR number 1 selector up here so that my compass or my HSI now shows us the data from this particular station. We could also already pre-select this towards VOR2 which is pre-selected for the first radial towards Golf Mike Hotel. Actually let's go ahead and do that and use VOR2 on it since we will still get the DME1 indication which is the one we need to define our turning point shown on our DME up here. The other thing we need is Lima Juliet NDB, so we are going to select APK1 or APK2. Both of them are going to work because we have tuned the NDB on both sides. And now this small needle up here is going to show us our track towards that station. This is basically the same as selecting an ADF on our EFIS control panel in the Boeing 737, and this is the same as selecting a VOR on that station. The only difference is you can only select a single needle. Finally, we have to select our runway track so that we know the track for our flight initially and we can do that using the heading bug that we can find in the middle of our screens. So we go all the way down and we set the runway track to 316. The heading bug is the big red screen up here and you can see it moving on the HSI up there. So this is now set to 316, and with that we've pre-selected our runway heading. The last thing we need to determine is the speed restriction that we initially have to meet, and if we look at the chart once more we can see that we've got a restriction of maximum 210 knots until we're established on the radial 242 inbound Gamminghausen. So since our speed in the autopilot window is in kilometers per hour, let's go ahead and use the tablet to convert 210 knots into kilometers per hour. So speed conversion 210 like this giving us around 390 kilometers per hour. So since this is our initial speed restriction we're going to set that on the speed display in the um, autopilot panel 388. Alright, with that our navigation setup for this departure is complete. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Now, stand by for the rest of these flight tutorials in the Anton of 2 to 5. Until then, if you liked the videos, do let me know in the video description below and also let me know if you would have done anything different on the setup. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one. If you want to support the channel, you can do that using the Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description below or by becoming a channel member, which is going to give you exclusive early access to new videos before everyone else can see them. Thank you very much and see you all again soon.